Hi, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, my name is Julie Menzies, and I'm the program manager for the Canadian Access Federation here at Canary. And uh, me, as well as all of my colleagues, are really excited uh, to be talking to you today about Edgerome Visitor Access, or what we lately call EVA here at Canary. Um, is service that we are going to be offering to Canadian Access Federation participants and that is being launched tomorrow. Um, so I have in here in the room uh, a couple of my colleagues with me to help me out. So I have Chris Phillips who is the technical architect for the Canadian Access Federation and he'll be here to present a few of the more technical slides near the end of the presentation as well as to answer any technical questions that you may have. I also have with us Hervé Guy who's here uh, as French language support. So if you have any questions in French, please do not hesitate um, to ask them. The presentation will be in English. However, Hervé is here to answer any questions in French and to also translate uh, for the rest of the group. Uh, I believe that everybody will have been sent the French slide deck already. We're gonna follow up after the presentation with the English slide deck as well. So a few housekeeping notes before we dive in. Uh, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please do not hesitate uh, to ask them using the question and answer button that you have at the bottom of your screen. We have a lot of content to cover throughout the presentation, uh, but we will be stopping to answer questions as appropriate. So without any further ado, uh, let's dive in and talk a little bit more about Eva. So what is Edgerome Visitor Access? So essentially what it is, is a service that's going to be hosted by Canary that allows institutions to create temporary Edgerome Visitor accounts for their visitors. So no longer will your visitors have to have, let's say, an open SSID, which we know isn't secure, or a separate guest access system that uses a different SSID. Now you can leverage Edgerome, which you have already at your institution, to be able to provide visitor access. So visitor access is going to be a hosted portal, like I mentioned, and it's going to use federated identity management for logging in. So you're going to need to have both Edgerome in place and federated identity management, which are both services offered by CAF in place at your institution to be able to access it. It's quick and easy to implement and roll out, as you'll see throughout the presentation. And the delegation of privileges are managed by your central IT department. So you have, um, as central IT, you have access to be able to delegate privileges to your staff and faculty at the institution. So what are the benefits of EVA? Well, um, we've already gone over one of them, which is being able to offer the security of Edgerome to all of your campus Wi-Fi users. It also is a great service in the fact that it reduces the number of transient credentials. So as soon as an EVA account is created, you're going to set a validity period and it automatically decommissions itself at the end of that validity period. So you don't have to worry about um, decommissioning accounts in your identity provider anymore. Uh, these are going to be automatically handled to you by the service. It also lowers the operational cost and speed of deployment of guest Wi-Fi for the fact that you are leveraging the Edgerome infrastructure that you already have in place. And it is going to become a nationally consistent and familiar service for frequent uh, Wi-Fi users at different campuses. Um, so as you'll see, there's the same branding and materials that are going to be used throughout um, the EVA service. So we often get the question, what's the difference between regular Edgerome accounts and EVA accounts? And the fact of the matter is, is there's no real technical differences. The quality of service is the same for end users as a regular um, Edgerome roaming user. However, we say that the risk profile is on par better than regular Edgerome for the fact that these accounts are time delimited and automatically decommission themselves. So there's a number of different ways that uh, EVA accounts can be created in the portal. And I'm gonna demonstrate those in a moment. Um, so you can create visitor accounts for individuals. So let's say you had somebody that was visiting your campus as a researcher for several months, you could create them an individual um, access account. You can also create batch accounts. You'll see, um, as I demonstrated, there's, you basically create a CSV file or an Excel file. And this would be if you were having, let's say, a conference with registered users. And you can create those all as a batch instead of individually. You can also create group accounts, um, which essentially are anonymous accounts that either are for a certain validity period or for um, a validity period from first login. 
And then the last one is SMS, um, and this is for events. So you can create SMS events. Some of you may have already seen this because we have a few pilot institutions that have been using the service for about a year now, and Canary has also been using it in pilot mode. So if you have attended, let's say, our Canary Summit, you will have seen the SMS events. And that is where users can go ahead and text the EVA number and self-provision their visitor account for the set time period of that event. All right, so now, I'm going to uh, switch over and I'm going to give a bit of a demo here of uh, the, the portal so you'll have your first view of it. All right. Just hold on one moment as we set that up. All right. Okay, so here you're getting your first view of the EVA portal. Um, what you're going to do is I'm going to actually show you the experience that you're going to have tomorrow if you have automatic access and we'll go over in a few minutes who's going to have access to EVA right away. So as the administrator or the primary technical contact for your institution, you will receive an, in, an invitation to administer the EVA site for your institution. So first of all, you're going to sign in and you're going to see here, um, this is the federated identity management piece. So you're going to select your institution and then log in with your institutional credentials. So this is what you're going to see for the first time. You're going to see you have it in min menu here. You have a cert, um, which is the computer emergency response team menu. And we'll go over those functions in a moment. Um, and then you can have, you have your username up here in the right hand corner. So if you click on that, you're going to see where you have administrator invitations. So if you so choose to invite other administrators at your institution, this is how you would do so. So you would go and you would click new administrator invitation. You would enter the email address of the administrator that you wish to invite. And then you would um, decide which roles to grant them. So the organization administrator is going to have all the functions in the admin menu that we're going to see in a moment. And the organization cert administrator is the one that's going to have all of the um, options in the cert menu. So you would go ahead and click and submit. And then this administrator, I won't show you the email now, but they'll receive an email with a link that they're going to have to use to log into the EVA portal to receive their administrative rights that have been granted to them. You're also going to be able to see the date of the invitation here and the date of the first login. One thing you're going to notice about the EVA site is that everything is in uh, Pacific time. So you're going to see we used one time zone throughout, which is um, the one that's on the furthest west hand coast of Canada. So that's what we've used at the moment. So what you're going to have to do next in order to have access, because here you can see you have admin rights and you have cert rights, but you don't have the menu, which is called My EVA, which allows you to create guest accounts. In order for you as administrator and for all of the other users of the admin portal, or sorry, of the EVA portal to have access, you have to create them a profile. And profiles can be created in the admin menu. In the admin, admin <laughs> menu, perfect. So you would go here to profiles, and then you would go to create profile. So there are three different ways that you can create profiles. The first one is an individual profile. So you would use an individual profile if you are interested in granting rights to somebody that you do not want to assign to other people within the organization. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one for myself for this presentation. So my account is testeva01, so I'm going to enter my email address there. I'm going to say that the maximum number of accounts that I can create in this profile is 100, and then the maximum time frame is 90. So you can see here that there's four different options that you can assign in each profile. So users with this profile may add visitors. So this is the ability to create those individual visitors. We're going to go over all of these functions in detail after as well. Users with this profile may upload batches of visitors. So I'm going to select here, may create groups, and may create SMS events. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And you're going to notice that nothing here has changed. So uh, this is a question we frequently get asked. You're going to have to log out and then log back in to be able to see those changes. So I'm just going to do that now. Perfect. 
So now you'll see that I have a new menu here, which has all of the functions that I've just assigned myself to in that profile. Before we get out of profiles, I want to show you two different uh, or two other ways that you can create profiles as well. So what I just created was called an individual profile. So that was permissions I just wanted to give to one person. If I wanted to assign a profile to a number of users, so let's say you wanted to give a specific profile um, to the folks in your IT help desk, you would go ahead and you would enter the profile name, and then you would put um, the email addresses of the people that you want to add here. So you can put multiple ones. And then you can so on and so forth. And then you can assign the maximum number of Eva accounts, period, and then which privileges you want to assign them. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this. The other way that you can create a profile is by a role profile. So this is, let's say, if you wanted to assign all of the staff at your institution the privilege, let's say, to just create three visitor accounts at each person. So this would be all staff, you would name it. And then you would assign the EduPerson affiliation role. So um, most institutions either use employee or staff, and those are the two options there. So I'd put that in here. The maximum number of EVA accounts that can be created is three, and for the maximum period, let's say, of 90 days. You want to be really careful when assigning these privileges out to all staff. You want to probably keep that limited and then just offer um, the ability to create batches and groups and SMS events to certain people. So I'm going to go ahead and create it. Now, if a person falls within two different profiles, it's always the rights of the individual profile that are going to prevail. So here, I would fall under both of these profiles because um, one of them is directly for me and then the other one I fall under because I am staff. Um, however, it's my individual profile that'll allow me. So now that we've gone through that, I'm actually gonna show the way that we create Eva accounts. So the first way is to, be get, to create an individual account. So you would go to My Eva and My Visitors. Now, just a side note that for folks that are staff and have been assigned these privileges but are not administrators, they're not gonna see the admin or the cert menu. What they're gonna see is these, the options that have been assigned to them along the top here of the menu. So in My Visitors, you can go ahead and create a visitor. You're gonna enter some really basic information about that visitor um, and their email, let's say. You can either choose to include an email or a mobile phone number. So they can receive their credentials either by email, by mobile phone number, or by both. So you would also select the communication language, which is either English or French. Now with the EVA portal, um, we know that it may not always be um, it may not always be the language of preference of the individual that you would know. So we've made sure that all of the communications that are coming from the EVA portal are bilingual. So if you do select English as a communication language, it, English will be the first in the message, but every message is bilingual. So since I don't have a mobile phone number here included, I've chosen to notify by email. And you, then you can also select to send yourself a confirmation. The access period here is important. So you're gonna decide what the access period is that you wanna grant the account for. So let's say I wanna grant it from today until tomorrow. And then you can include some notes just for yourself here. And then you would click submit. And here, this person, Julie Menzies, at this email address will now have been sent their credentials by email. The next option that you can have uh, to create accounts is the batch function. So this would be used, let's say, if you had uh, a conference with some registered attendees for which you had their contact information, be it email addresses, SMS numbers, or both. So there's a handy little template that you would click on here. That's going to bring up the CSV template here momentarily. All right. Perfect. So what you're going to see when you open up is here. What I would suggest is that um, you size all of your columns so that you can see all of the content in the CSV file. And you're going to overwrite the values in here. They're just um, kind of reminders of what has to be put in each column. So you would go ahead and enter first name here. They have a middle name in column B, last name column C, the email address, SMS number, making sure that you include the one, and then the language of communication. So I'm going to close this down. I've created a, a quick little batch style already that I'm going to upload. Um, so I'm just going to put webinar batch. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and select my batch file. All right. And any batch notes and then the validity period. You're going to want to select in here. I'm going to go today to tomorrow. And I've included email addresses in that batch file for everybody. So I'm going to choose to select email as my notification method. Once I click submit here, you're going to see I had included three accounts in that batch file and they're going to show up here as individual accounts that you can either delete individually or modify individually, or um, you can modify the batch as a whole as well. So if you need to see the batch to be able to modify it, you would go back again to my batch level loads and you can modify the batch. Um, and for these type of details, you could, you know, let's say you wanted to add an additional day to the validity period, you would go ahead and submit that change and it would apply to everybody. You see everybody's account has been changed here. If you do want to modify um, individual accounts, you would go to my visitors and you'll see that all of these three accounts are now included in there. And it says in which upload they have been included in or which batch they're a part of. I'm gonna hop over to SMS events now to show you what that would look like. So you can assign permissions to create an SMS event to multiple staff um, at your campus if you so choose, um, or you can retain that privilege in the IT department. So to be able to create an SMS event, the multi-day we call, you would go here to create SMS event. So go here, so webinar, SMS event, and then you can choose a keyword that makes sense. Um, I'm going to put Eva launch one, two, three on here. And then the maximum number of Eva accounts that can be created under that SMS event would be here. And then you would choose your validity period. So I'm going to go from today until tomorrow. So it's that simple. You would then click submit. Your SMS event here has now been created. If you wish to edit it, you would click here to be able to edit it or you can click on the keyword and that's gonna display the narrowcast page. So the narrowcast page is what you've probably seen at Canary events or events that have been hosted by our pilot institutions before. So this is a narrowcast that can be displayed um, you know, as a slide at the beginning of the presentation. It could be printed out and left in strategic areas. You can put it on tablets or monitors throughout the conference room or in strategic areas. And folks can go ahead and text the EVA number, um, text the keyword to the EVA number and uh, be able to self-provision their credentials. Now, if anybody's interested in doing this right now, uh, you can actually do that right now and just to get the experience and understand what that would be. Now you'll see here we have a QR code and that QR code is for the CAT profile for Edgerome visitor access. So we do recommend the use of the CAT profile and Chris will talk about it a little bit later, but that is really to make sure that the session is secure. So if they don't have access to um, data right away, they can go ahead and secure the connection like in step three, or they can go ahead and download the CAT profile and be able to secure that connection right away. So that's SMS events there. And I'm going to talk in a minute about a different type of SMS event, which is a one day SMS event that only the administrators at your institution have access to. But before I go there, I'm going to talk about groups. So groups enable you to be able to create anonymous accounts and why you may want to do that. So anonymous accounts in the sense that they're not assigned to anybody right away. The reason you may want to do that is let's say you're anticipating that there are participants at your conference for which you've created an SMS event that may not have a cell phone on hand. So they can't self provision their accounts. You may want to create anonymous groups. So I'm gonna put um, webinar group here. And I'm just gonna create five accounts with that. And you can decide if you want to set the access um, for a specific date range. So if you wanted it to match the conference that we had just uh, created there, we would put it through here, or from the date of first login. So let's say um, you wanted to keep some on the hand at your reception desk, and you wanted them to be valid for one day from first login, you can do that. So what happens here um, is that you would go ahead and submit the communication language 
on these type of events is important. And it's important because the uh, once it's created, it creates a PDF of these handy little cards that you can give out with EVA credentials um, to your uh, visitors at your institution or at your conference or event. Now, they're only uh, generated in the language that you select here. So if I select English, they'll be generated in English. If I select French, they'll be generated in French. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. You'll see that all of those five accounts have now been created. Um, if you so choose, once you give one of these out at your institution, you can choose to enter the information, the first name, last name, email address, or SMS number of the person that you have given it to so that you have that information in your system. I'm going to show you really quickly what those will look like. Just like batches, you can choose to edit this group or you can choose to edit the individual accounts um, that have been generated in the My Visitor Access. So what's going to happen is the person that has created these group accounts is going to receive an email that includes uh, a PDF. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like really quick. So Julie, while you're going through, there's two questions here, from the, one from an anonymous attendee about the role prof profile and the SAML group. So that link is against your home identity provider where you define staff or employee, those kinds of things are your home identity provider. And Hongbo in the chat, uh, just curious, can an Ava visitor account created in one institution be used in others as well? I assume so since there's no difference from regular account as far as Andrew Rowan concerned. Yes, that's an accurate statement because that account is live from that period of time. So when an organize when someone creates that account and that account expires for somebody you'll get a notification over sms and i believe email as well and that will highlight who provisioned the account and that's whom that person needs to reach out to if they want to continue that level of service or that account is to survive any further so thanks julie no problem thank you chris all right so what you see on the screen here is the pdf that's going to be generated by the group accounts so you see you can cut these out and you can hand them out you know with conference badges or let's say at your reception desk at your institution if somebody doesn't have a cell phone and isn't able to self-provision their account now i'm going to hop back into the demo here and i did mention that there was a different type of sms event and what that is is a one-day sms event and this is created for all of our institutions um, and only administrators have access to it. Um, and it's basically a narrow cast page and it's available in different formats and languages where there is um, a one day SMS keyword that rolls over and changes every day and is in unique to the institution. So you can see here that today's keyword for Canary is Canary 51. Feel free to provision yourself an account there too. Um, and it's only valid. So this automatically, what we do here at Canary is we actually have this um, on tablets in our meeting rooms with a, a little button that says need Wi-Fi. And it automatically brings up this narrow cast page. So any guests here at Canary can self-provision their accounts. So you can display these in strategic areas on your campus, let's say in your library, in your reception area. And then there's nothing to do once it's all the, the narrow cast has been displayed. It automatically rolls over um, each day. Perfect. So the next things that I want to go over, we've gone over a few of these in min functions. So we've gone over profiles and how to create them. We've gone over the one day SMS narrowcast. This page here um, that I'm hovering over is the one day SMS keywords. Now, I'm not going to show those on screen because it'll show all of Canary's one day SMS keywords, but you'll be able to manage those for your institution and see the ones that are coming up as well. There's also statistics, and I'll let you explore that on your own for your institution. And then we have this all visitors um, access. So you'll see here all the visitors that I created today, as well as you know past the visitors that we've had here, you know throughout testing of this service. So you can go ahead and you can search, um, let's say for the specific keyword, and it'll pull it up, or you can sort these by. Um, by the different column headings as well. So as administrator, if you have the organization administrator privileges, you'll have access to view these. However, you don't have access to modify or delete them. You need to have the organizational cert administrator right or role to be able to do that. So you're gonna see here in the cert menu, 
And that the CERT folks can do two different things. So they can manage the profiles for the institution. So here they can see the two profiles that I created earlier. Um, they can edit those profiles as well. Um, so let's say I thought uh, Julie had, you know, too many accounts that could be provisioned. So I'm going to change that to 50. So the CERT administrator can do that. They can also view all visitors at the institution and end any active accounts. So let's say you have somebody um, that's on Ed Jerome has an EVA account that you do not want having access to it anymore, you can go ahead and you can end this account um, right away. So go ahead and click it and then you'll see that the status of it has ended. You can also search for accounts here, see who has been online, and you can also sort by the status. Okay. So the other things that I wanted to point out um, here in the portal is that you're going to have links here and so will all the staff that you assign privileges to to be able to access even instructions on the Canary website. So we have all of our materials on the Canary website and those include uh, support manuals. So we have support manuals for administrators that go through all of the functions in the admin and the cert menus. We have um, a user guide for super users and super users guide goes through all of the batch the my group and the sms functions and then we have one for standard users that goes through the my visitors or be able to the ability to create individual visitors we are also going to have up by the end of the day today uh, tutorial videos that I'll go through all of these different functions that I've gone over. So if ever you've missed something or have questions about it, there's going to be videos that are going to help guide you through or that you can refer your users to as well. Um, and then we have also a page on the Canary website um, that shows you how to um, how visitors can self-provision their accounts. So feel free to point to that as well. So you'll see the QR code and how to do so on different types of devices. All right, so I'm gonna switch actually out of the demo. Oh, we do have another question. The realm of those users will be ava, at ava.edgerome.ca to the anonymous identity. Perfect. Oh, yes, we do. All right. Perfect. So we wanted to make it really clear what's going to happen. So tomorrow is a launch day for this service. However, in order to use this service, um, there's a few things that you need to have in place. So we've been sending out a few communications around this. So this shouldn't be any surprise, but just to go through it in detail. A, you need to have Edgerome and FIM implemented to be able to use the service because we use FIM for login. So if you don't have both services implemented, we're encouraging you to reach out to us at CanOps, so C-A-N-O-P-S at canary.ca, um, to see if there's any update that's required to your participation agreement in order to implement both services, if you are interested in doing so. And um, Annie, our CAF administrator, is gonna help you out and be able to guide you through that process. If you do already have both services implemented, um, we have to see if you're part of the RNS entity category, and I'm gonna talk in a minute about exactly what that is. Um, but basically, the EVA service is a part of this research and scholarship entity category. So if your institution is a part of it, then you automatically have access. Um, so what's gonna happen is tomorrow, your primary technical contact for CAF is gonna be sent an administrator invitation to the EVA site, and you're gonna have access right away to all of these features and functions that I showed you today. If you no, are not a part of the RNS entity category yet, um, we're hoping that many of you do decide to join, then there are additional steps required. So you can choose to join the RNS entity category, which is just an application that takes a couple of minutes to fill out, and then just something that has to be tagged in your metadata, or you can contact us at tickets at canary.ca to configure your attribute release policy for this service. And then Chris and the technical support team are also going to be able to send you your administrator invitation. So the research and scholarship entity category um, is basically a group of service providers and identity providers that are part of the research and scholarship space. So all of the post-secondary institutions in Canada are automatically approved for this. So it's just a matter of filling out um, an application 
on our website that just takes maybe one or two minutes to fill out and then you'll get automatically approved and we can tag you in the system as that and what happens is that you share just a very um, small set of attributes so name email unique identifier and affiliation which is optional with all of the services that have been tagged research and scholarship as well so Eva is one of those services and there are other services as well. Um, so we do encourage you to apply for this entity category. Um, if not, you'll have to take the additional step of reaching out to us at Tickets uh, to be able to configure your attribute release policy. And you'll see on the slide deck here and we're gonna be sending it out later as well. There is more information on our website um, if you'd like to read a bit more about it or feel free to reach out to us um, at calf at canary.ca if you do have any questions. All right, so a few common questions that we've had uh, so far. So people are very interested in what the EVA service costs. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's already included in your CAF participation fee. So we've decided not to charge an additional fee for this service. Um, it's gonna be available to all eligible Canadian Access Federation participants, which as a post-secondary institution, uh, you'll automatically be approved for that. And what the maximum number of days an EVA credential can be valid for, it is 365 days in the system. However, each institution has control over their own destiny. So if you do wish to have um, that time limit for your institution reduced, you most certainly can. Just reach out to us at tickets at canary.ca. Um, or you can also, as I showed you before, manage it for your individual users using profiles. So you can keep the 365, let's say, for your institution as a whole, but then limit your profiles to a certain amount of days. We've drummed up a, a set of FAQs as we've gone through the testing here and also from feedback from our pilot institutions. So you'll be able to see those on our website as well and the link to it is just below there. So deployment recommendations. Um, this slide is actually adapted from one of our pilot institutions, Trent University. So Andrew Bell presented with me last year um, on this. And these were some of the recommendations that he had as he was going through the deployment of the pilot of EVA at the institution. So one thing that was clear and you know <laughs> that should be clear throughout the presentation is there's no real technical pieces to EVA. It's really all process. So one thing he recommended was to start by inventorying their use cases. So you know, any generic or shared accounts that you had for visitors or visitor access right now, um, your internet thing of device or your internet of of thing devices um, that you might have, let's say on an open SSID right now. Um, if you need to um, he also recommended determining your user groups and populations, so whether or not you had uh, help desk conferences, academic or, or executive secretaries and facilities and the general public, and then to establish policies for who can issue guest credentials. So you're gonna wanna think about this a bit before you go ahead and create your profile. So you're gonna wanna think about what your policies are around this. And then it's a matter of planning communication because this is really about change management if you have a guest, um, a uh, guest SSID already at your institution. So it's additional steps if you do are offering an open SSID, but it is beneficial for your users. It's beneficial for your guests because you're offering the security of Edgerome to everybody. So perfect. I think we have a question here. So who will provide support for the end users? So we would expect that the, the IT help desk at the institution to be able to answer some questions, especially about um, you know, any accounts that have been created or whatnot. And if you do have to escalate, you can escalate questions to our technical support team here as well at tickets at canary.ca. This is not much different than the existing support surface that many institutions have already. So if a user comes to your, your help desk or contacts uh, your central IT for support, the very first question we will be asking if we get the question is, have you contacted your home institution and have they, have they, or have they not helped you out here? Perfect, so with that, I'm actually going to transfer the mic over to Chris, who's gonna talk a little bit about points to ponder um, with your EVA deployment. <coughs> All right, so I think what we'll try to do is let's see if we can answer some of these other questions. 
can I disable an EBA account created by other institutions from connecting to my network? Hmm. A short answer is I don't think so. In that, in not at, at least not from the admin portal per se. So just like every every Edgerome site has the ability at their Radius server to handle any authentication request access accept that comes in from any of the Edgerome network, you you always have the ability to always employ your existing security practices and principles. So you would uh, employ MAC address filtering or any of those things, and you could administratively curtail that that particular account at that particular time, but not through the Edgerome Visitor Access Portal. So the other question is from Charles, is the affiliation attribute Eduperson Sculpt Affiliation or Eduperson Affiliation? If you're releasing, I believe it's Eduperson Affiliation, essentially if you're releasing Eduperson Affiliation, you're re you should be releasing Eduperson Sculpt Affiliation as well, um, because it's the same information, just concatenated with the at uh, your realm as such. Brian chimes in. I missed the first couple of minutes, so you may have addressed this. Is this presentation being recorded? Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know about on the afterwards on demand question. Um, I think we will. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we probably yeah. will have it available on, on demand, uh, probably on the YouTube channel. We'll see. And yeah, it was also pointed out to me there's another presentation next week as well. Right. So next, is it just the, the click here? No, it's right here. Perfect. So just looking at some of the planning side of things, as we pivot to the technical side, uh, the primary technical contact is the one that's given access. And it doesn't mean you initially grant access to everyone immediately. You can play with this yourself first. And we expect, we encourage you to do that and give yourself the opportunity for early testing with this. And by the way, as we were talking, I can tell you that there's at least, uh, there's probably about six accounts that have been provisioned from the audience right now uh, of various domains. Hello there in, uh, in uh, New Brunswick and Manitoba and uh, Ontario. So yep, we can see those kinds of things. And that's the, that's the kind of uh, purview or the visibility that we have or the system has when people do that self-provisioning story. For the localization uh, testing, have your administrator sign in because you want them to be familiar. Julie really jumped into some of the meat and potatoes of the activity or the ability to do things. And there's, this, is a, this is a pretty big ramp, so we want to uh, get acclimatized to the story. The other way that you saw in the, the great coverage that Julie had was the SMS provisioning, which I think is quite unique. And we know there's some other vendors in the field that do this kind of story. Um, begins with an A, ends in an A is one of them. Uh, but I don't know if they have, uh, it's not, I think it's probably a toll service. So there's no extra fees on this. And I see a couple other questions streaming in here in just a moment. We'll get to those in just a moment. There's about four so far. The other one about the CSV upload of users, and Julie, again, great job about saying, here's how you deal with uh, conferences or opportunity to provision conferences. Uh, that's a great place for it as well. Everyone's not, you don't necessarily feel like you're going to use every single one of the features. So there's gonna be different uses in different times for these kinds of things. And you may not use the CSV upload until you have that conference coming this summer. The other thing that we uh, recommend people do is just be mindful of that cap on events. <coughs> Sometimes uh, our, our rule of thumb for IP space and in the recommendations is make sure you have adequate IP space, IP space on hand in your edge room network. And we also have uh, a story around expect people to have about two devices or maybe even two and a half devices per person. So if you're sizing or you're, ca you're calibrating yourself, say I have a large conference, just think of that number of devices and, and pick a high water mark. I'm gonna pause here for a second. Uh, we already uh, touched on the realm. Uh, Victor, uh, will institutions have the ability to look up user information? Uh, yes, it's in the admin side of things that Julie showed a little bit That's earlier. Right, yeah. uh, so it doesn't cross over, it's only for your institution and the accounts that you provision. So there's a wall between those kinds of that information from organization to organization. So, uh, Dennis, uh, will the end user device be you peep or eat TLS? It will be uh, 
password authentication inside an ET, uh, a TLS tunnel. We'll get into that in just a moment. So what we expect to see in the field and those who have tested the SMS account, you will see that you'll get a, a, a quite a short password and it comes through SMS. And the, what you also saw on the QR code is that we have an Edgerome cat profile that will protect those, those creds uh, from other um, things like ePammer or those kinds of risks that are out in the field, such as this community, our, our community saw. We sent out a, a, a security notice about the risks of not having an Edgerome cat profile on your device, and I believe we'll get into that in just a few moments. Can we customize the SMS posters, i.e. logo? The short answer is yes. Yep, there's an opportunity for a logo there. So next, please. So should Ava get, accounts get different access? They're essentially the same st style of roaming user, except that we have more information about them and they also have a better finite usage period than regular Edgerome accounts. Many of us who've been carrying or uh, have a relationship with higher education have been on the Edgerome network for years and years. And for those who have a very short-term relationship with our community, whether it be through a conference, a visiting professor, someone just, uh, just new to the campus, you'll have a bit extra information. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago, every school has the ability to use the CERT environment to see the accounts they provision. And even the ones you didn't, you still have the access to your own radio server and logs to do even more in-depth analysis. So we, our outlook is that they're, they're just a, another type of roaming user with the same level of only roaming access outside your firewall. We also see organizations, once you place these users outside your firewall, and I, through our testing on Edgerome, we are seeing people using that and doing a non-routable IP, and so they're mapped uh, to the internet. So many people are already doing all these uh, good practices around Wi-Fi and partitioning special VLANs and those kinds of things. So if you're looking for an interesting story with regards to uh, consolidating things into less spectrum used, Please give us a call. We'll have we can have a, a different conversation. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we have another questions before I go on? If an event so another follow up question here is uh, if an event is caused by a user from another institution, how do you trace that user? So what happens is that when you trace that user, you'll have the MAC address and you'll have the event timestamp in your radius logs. And that's something you would escalate to tickets at canary.ca. And so there is always that traceability or backtrace capability from our perspective. And just like you would normally do at other, um, hey, I need to backtrace someone with any other uh, institutions, you can still do that. So we have that, that ability here. Thanks, Victor, for the questions. So one of the things that we were talking about earlier uh, and you saw in the QR code is how do we get people to configure this? So certainly there's a number of people who've SMS the system right now, and they are actually provisioned an account, and they would have typed in the user ID and password, and if you're on an Android device, you would have accepted the, uh, accept any certificate, and that's not the best outcome for those kinds of accounts, but for these very, very short-lived ones, not linked to any other credential, that's, that's a reasonable, we believe that is a reasonable place to be. And once that person is provisioned it, the immediate thing we expect people to do is really scan that QR code and do the Edgerome own configuration assistant tool, the CAT tool, to get that stronger profile. And you would have remembered a couple of weeks ago from many of the people on the, on the call, if you're the primary technical contact, you got a note said, if you're using the uh, Edgerome network and you don't have a cat profile, we're being quite insistent of, of that having you having that profile. And Edgerome Visitor Access also has one. And so when you scan the QR code, that's gonna be the onboarding of that user to the cat configuration. We'll also, as the Federation operator, we'll be able to see the, the uptake and those kinds of things. And if you do have problems, just like Victor commented, say, please let us know that's, that's we can uh, assist in that regard. The other thing that we've encountered and have uh, been in uh, some talks with different sites is about an Edgerome Assistance SSID that the only thing it onboards people to is cat.edgerome.org just to get that profile. 
So this is not a captive portal, but it's an SSID that's not, it's an open SSID with zero access to anything else except cat.edgeroom.org. We won't get into the conversation today about how to configure that, but we've seen sites do it and we're recommending edgeroom underscore assistance because if we have sites adopt this practice, both en anglais and en français, you can have a way that is more consistent across Canada. So the more familiar people are of this story on onboarding and including your, your cohort that comes in in the, um, the fall, when you onboard your users, you just want them to immediately be on that cat profile, not just for edgeroom visitor access, but for your home institution as well. So there's a deeper story here on how to get uh, more, more secure access. And uh, we're at the end of the conversation, at the actual presentation part, we do have another question from Jacques. What radius adjustments do we need to implement? And no radius adjustments here, zero. So you can provision an account right now. You can sign in with this account. You'll be placed per your EduRoam configuration as a roaming user outside your firewall, preferably, I'm sure that you, I've already configured it that way. And, um, you'll just be able to get to the internet, but at nothing else. Uh, is it possible to limit the number of... Peripherals uh, and devices. <coughs> for a visitor? No, pas maintenant. So not right now, and just like EduRoam, you don't limit your EduRoam credentials now. If you're using user ID and password, you can use that credential across multiple devices. If you're a site, and from what we recall, no one across Canada is really doing EPTLS, uh, using cert certificates for sign-on to EduRoam here in Canada just yet, uh, that would be the place where you would actually provision a certificate per device. So no, there is no limit on this at this time. We don't see that as a, and by the way, that's a great question, Welly, about, um, about is this like, what's this uh, reasonable use story? And I'm sure this is one of those emergent things. Oh my goodness, there's going to be reuse here. Well, there's reuse with your Edgeroom credential today. If you think about your own personal use, you have a phone, you have your laptop, you have a tablet, you may have a second phone. So you at least have somewhere between north or two to four devices of your own. And you don't want to encumber the user um, in doing, in gaining access or having to call the support desk every single time. And Edgeroom Visitor Access allows you to soften the, the, uh, the onboarding story quite a lot at the beginning. And as you bring that user online, you want them to be in the cat profile story. But that's why we don't limit the number of devices. It, at, at this stage, it's not part of the feature set. So. And I think, that's, I think that's about it. Are there any other questions from the community from the call today? Perfect. We'll just wait another moment or two. Yeah. I really appreciate, we really appreciate, not just me, but everyone <laughs> in, at Canary appreciates everyone's patience and, and as we brought the, the service online. It was a long time in coming, but it, we wanted to make sure we were delivering a, a high quality product. And um, a lot of testing has gone into this and we, and as we ramp things up, uh, we'll start bringing more and more people up. So we do have another question from Jacques. Uh, you use AD for the AAA route non UCAM users to Canary servers. How did we route AVA users in this context? So right now, EduRoom Visitor Access users are just like any roaming visiting user. So if they have an access accept from a non, in this particular case, your question, UCAM domain, you place them on the same network segment that you do for uh, EduRoom users now. Oh, we get, we're having more questions here. Wow. So Scott. <laughs> So how can, you, how can you easily tell if your institution is part of the RNS group? You can visit the Canary website, uh, canary.ca slash identity and the participants list. We'll have that. Yeah. Do I have the ability to uh, Participating it? organizations. Yeah, the yeah. participating organizations view. I'm not gonna try to jump out to it here. However. Can a user account that was ended come back and join? Yes. I believe we will send, a, there's, there's, a ver, there's a couple of variations of that story. So if the account, there's, there's a, a bit of a state engine, whether the account is ended, terminated early, 
or whether the account was rolled off. So there's a couple of sunset stories there. One is like a, a very abrupt sunset. Mm -hmm. The other one is, thanks, thanks very much for using Edgerome. Maybe we'll see you again. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe you can reuse account. But at the, at, at the end of the day though, is if you have a, if there's a challenge, you just reprovisioned. Sorry, Julie's kind of jumping in here. Yeah, I'm just uh, one thing I wanted to mention. You might be talking about the self provisioning story. So let's say you had a conference and you had a user there that self provisioned their account using their mobile device. If you went into your search function and you clicked delete to end that account, they will not be able to self provision using that same event. Yeah. And Thinking back to uh, maybe a comment that Victor had commented on just a few minutes ago on the call, is that that story Julie just mentioned about if we're going to terminate or end that account, what you you don't want to play whack-a-mole with uh, trying to suspend a user or, or curtail a user's access during a particular event. That's why that account uh, termination technique is there. That doesn't mean that they can't find it yet another way, or if that was uh, that that end termination was a mistake. There is still, you can still provision the user via the web. So there's a couple of other different nuances to that story, uh, but we believe that that kind of case is rare. So Albert, you're asking about universities in the pilot, but it's not a question you're asking. Perhaps you wanted to know who was a part of the pilot. So we had uh, Trent University, we had Niagara College, we had St. Thomas University, and the University of Regina as part of our pilot participants. Yeah, for which we thank for all their time and being able Absolutely. to uh, exercise the, the, the service as they could. Perfect. We'll just wait another moment, see if there's any more questions that pop up. Well, great, Tim. Thanks. Tim thanks us, and we thank Tim <laughs> for yeah. being part of the pilot. Excellent. Perfect. So um, we are going to be sending an email uh, tomorrow with this slide deck, um, and we're also going to be sending a launch email uh, to all of the primary technical contacts of our institution. So um, as I mentioned earlier, if you have FIM and Edgerome implemented and you are a part of the RNS uh, entity category, you will also be sent an invitation tomorrow to log into the system. Otherwise, there may be some additional steps that will be taken, and all of those will be also detailed uh, in the email that is going to be sent. So I want to thank everybody for your time and I hope this um, was very useful for you and that you're as excited as we are for the launch of the service. So thank you all so much and if you do have any questions please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, either if you have technical questions at tickets at canary.ca or for administrative support at canops at canary.ca. There's a small technical, technical note at the end, knowing that we have provisioned some people, don't be surprised if after one day that the account ceases working, because we, what we'll do is we'll just do a sweep of the accounts and just make sure everything is uh, in good order. So okay. thank you, yeah, thank you very much for testing them live as we're talking. <laughs> Excellent, thanks so much. Have a great day, guys.